How's it going guys, Genesis Crypto here and today we have a video on Bitcoin and why is it so important? Why is it so popular? Why is everybody so obsessed with Bitcoin? Why? We're going to be answering that question right now guys. Now, there's a big reason why Bitcoin is so important. And there's a big reason why people are backing it up. And there's a big reason why it's becoming so popular in such a little time. A dollar, a US dollar in 1860 compared to now is $28.53 in 2018. So if you had a dollar in 1860, that dollar is $28.53 worth in 1860. That is what you call inflation, guys. That is the US inflation from 1860 to 2018. So to cap that, that is over 158 years, guys. So there is a $27.53 difference from $1 in 1860 to $1 in 2018, which means the worth of a dollar has decreased dramatically. All right? The cumulative price change, which means the change from 1860 to 2018, was 2,753%. The dollar has gone down in value the purchasing power has gone down but what does that matter and by the way what even is inflation well a quick google search shows us that inflation is a general increase in prices and fall in the purchasing value of money and that's been happening since 1860 to think that our fiat currency has been failing us for 158 years. I haven't been alive for 100 years. I haven't been I haven't been alive for 30 years, right? So, we are born in this world with a failed currency. And what does that even mean? Like how does this even affect us on a day-to-day -day thing? Well, if purchasing power is decreased, it means the goods that we purchase you want to buy that pot pie in Walmart. You want to brush your teeth. You want to buy a teeth, toothbrush and uh, paste. And you want to buy a printer. You want to buy a TV. You want to buy anything in this world. You require money. Right? Now, if you're buying in the U.S., you require U.S. dollars. If you're buying anywhere else, it's the same thing. You require fiat money. Money given to you by the government in a way. Right? So, when the dollar's price goes down your pot pie when it was worth 50 cents now it's worth a dollar right now what happens if everything starts growing in price it's a domino effect by the way not just when one thing grows in price everything else grows in price now what happens well you're still making the same amount of money right you're still making either minimum wage or what you're making in your job which means the amount of money that you make per month or whatever technically just decreased didn't it because now you can afford less you can't the money that you made before can't give you what you had bef uh what you had been getting before right because your purchasing power has decreased all right cool now that we understand that who even makes this dollar bill who makes it and that is also a quick Google search. It says right over here, today USD notes are made from cotton fiber paper. Unlike most common paper, which is made of wood fiber, US coins are produced by the United States Mint. US dollar bank notes are printed by the Bureau of Engraving and Printing. Now these two uh, areas of the, um, of the government, we're gonna go back to them, but they are not even that important. We're gonna go back to them though, all right? And since 1914, have been issued by the Federal Reserve. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, so we get these US dollars that have been failing us since uh, 1860, over 158 years. Our money is decreasing per day, right? In ways where we don't even get to see fully. It's more like the goods and services and stuff like that are increasing in price and our dollar is decreasing in value due to that, right? Cool. But wait a minute, 
the government the government gives us money i thought my job gives me money not really guys and this is where things get really interesting all right what is the federal reserve here in wikipedia the federal reserve also known as fed and whatever is the central banking system of the united states created in december 23 1913 all right now there was a lot of crises that happened that led to the creation of the federal reserve and it actually started in the first crisis right over here all right the panic of 1907 now i actually clicked this to learn about the panic of 1907 this is actually a picture right over here of wall street during the panic of october 1907 and what i read through all of this is pretty much banks and everything started getting bankrupt right so what happened guys the panic of 1907 pretty much led to the financial the federal reserve system as you guys can see leading to the creation of the federal reserve system all right so that one panic has led us to what we have now called the federal reserve system now just to let you guys know the federal reserve system does not print the money does not make extra money but what do they do what is the point of the federal reserve system right well the federal reserve system has three key objectives that you guys can see right here the u.s congress established three key objectives for monetary policy in the federal reserve acts maximizing employment stabilizing prices stabilizing prices keep that in mind and moderating long-term interest rates right okay that is the three most important jobs of the federal reserve but what do the federal reserve do with the money they pretty much control the fucking money literally there, there you guys go it says the u.s congress gave the job of maximizing employment stabilizing prices and moderating long-term interest rates for you to be able to do that you need to manipulate the economy for you to have more jobs in the economy you need to manipulate the economy for you to stabilize prices you need to manipulate the economy for you to moderate long-term interest rates you probably need to manipulate the economy right so like i said guys the federal reserve does not print more money but who do the banks go to when they need more money they go to the federal reserve the federal reserve controls everything the federal reserve gives the money to the banks the banks gives the loans to us and whatever we need credit blah 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 right when the banks have enough money to pay back their debt they pay it back to the federal reserve little by little right when they have excess amount of money all right and that's pretty much what happens but like i said the federal reserve does not print out money but wait boom mind blown now you guys know or you probably knew this this whole time but either way the federal reserve manipulates and controls the way money is used in america now the moment we've all been waiting for who prints our money who inflates our money who makes shit get to shit the united states department of the treasury it's an executive department and the treasury of the united states federal government established by an act of congress in 1789 to manage government revenues its responsibility including producing currency and coinage collecting taxes and paying bills of the U.S. government, managing the federal finances, supervising banks and thrifts, and advising on fiscal policies. You guys heard it right there. As you guys can see, the Treasury prints and mints all paper currency and coins in circulation through the Bureau of Engraving and Printing and the United States Mint. So they pretty much tell the United States Mint and the Bureau of Engraving and Printing they tell them give me more money and they do it because this is a government and they have to follow the government the department also collects all federal taxes through the internal revenue service as you guys know the internal revenue first service is the irs and they manage u.s government debt instruments so 
combined with the Federal Reserve and the Department of Treasury, which are government areas, right? The government branches. These two powers control everything that we know of the economy today. They control it all. The banks get the money from the Federal Reserve. The Department of Treasury even prints out all the money we have. That's crazy, guys. That's crazy that humans have so much power over millions of humans. That's crazy. And as you guys know, money obviously gives you houses and everything, right? Money is power in the US, right? That's just that's the truth. You could think of money however the hell you want. You could say the money is the root of all evil. You could say money is, is the worst thing possible, blah, 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 whatever. Money gives you power, simple. Money gives you a house, money gives you a company, money gives you internet, money gives you everything you have. Which means the government that prints out this money and regulates it and governs it gives you everything you have and can control it how they see fit and can do more of it or less of it as they see fit. That is crazy. So let's answer the question. Why is Bitcoin so damn important? for so many people and why is Bitcoin so popular well because we are a country that is manipulated through these aren't this is not this is not me making shit up this is not me um, what's the word that people always use conspiracy I'm not making conspiracy here guys these are the hard facts. This is the truth. There's no conspiracy. We are being manipulated by the government through economical changes that they see fit. Whether it's good or bad, it doesn't matter. They can control it however they want to. They just throw the tables out there and then we obviously are making the trades and all that stuff and they don't know what the fuck is gonna make the change. Sorry for my uh, whatever, but they really don't know what they're doing in the form. Like, for example, you never know truly when Bitcoin's price is going to go up or down. So how the hell are they going to know from hundreds of millions of people uh, using this currency called the US dollar? How are they going to know that them putting in more money into the uh, into this world is going to make, you know, the difference that they exactly want? Right. So. Bitcoin is decentralized. There is no government involved whatsoever the most the government will do is regulate it they probably will regulate it eventually that's just realistic right so government is essential uh, bitcoin is decentralized which means no government controls it which means whatever bitcoin does bitcoin does because people are involved in it because people are buying it or selling it right if bitcoin gets as popular as we all would like it to be then bitcoin can be the world's first economy and currency to not be controlled by anyone. Bitcoin also gives a lot of people the opportunity of passive income, which means now we could go into a whole, whole big conversation about how jobs work and how it could be the modern slavery. Now that could be a conspiracy that could, that's definitely a lot of people's just thoughts, right? But if you really think about it, you work nine to five, eight hours a day, five days a week. That's a lot of your time. That's a whole bunch of your time. You sleep one thirds of your life and you work the other third or more than one third actually. So what the hell do you do for the rest of the time that you live? That's a pretty pathetic life, right? Which means, yeah, you could pretty much say that a job is pretty close to some kind of modern slavery. Right. If like I said, if they control the, the, the currency and money and all that stuff and we go and we employ wherever the hell we want to because we need money. Right. Then what's really happening? Well, they give us the money. And they control the money. And then we work to get that money. Is that slavery? Is that just a very nice, interesting, complex way for slavery to be? Possibly, guys, possibly. 
But Bitcoin doesn't do that because it's not controlled, which means there is passive income opportunities. There is job opportunities. There is company opportunities. There is so much opportunity when it comes to Bitcoin and all the other altcoins. Bitcoin is important because we need something that is not manipulated and controlled. Bitcoin is important because it is making people real money, not inflated money. Bitcoin is important because there is no way to make more of it. 21 million and that's it. And if Bitcoin, for example, if Bitcoin stops becoming uh, profitable, I guess, right? There's about a thousand more altcoins out there, right? Bitcoin is possible to be used. I use my Visa card to buy things all the time with Bitcoin. Did you guys know you could even connect a Visa card to your Bitcoin Coinbase account? I did it and it's awesome. I love it, right? So why is Bitcoin so popular? Because nobody wants to live a life where every single amount of wealth that you have is controlled by the government. Bitcoin is something we all need. We need it. If Bitcoin is not the thing, we need something like Bitcoin. If Bitcoin is not the popular one, the one that's going to be uh, the world's economy or whatever, we need something, something out there that's just like Bitcoin. It doesn't have to be Bitcoin. It has to be similar to Bitcoin, right? We need it. We need it to continue advancing. We humans love to advance naturally. We love to create naturally. We love to go further in life naturally. That's why everything you see around you is way different from what it was back then. That's why your TV is huge. That's why your TV is beautiful. 4K resolution. That's why you have AC. That's why your house is made different. That's why everything around you is better, different, more complex, and more interesting. Because we humans love to create. And it is time to revolutionize our economy. And Bitcoin happens to be one of the best things right now, at this exact moment in life, to do just that. So there you guys have it. That is why Bitcoin is important. And that is why Bitcoin is popular. It's a very, very crazy thing, really, to think that. I mean, like the facts are there and Bitcoin could definitely change things, right? We just need to uh, adopt and adopt and adopt and adopt and adopt, which we have been doing. Bitcoin has been growing like crazy. It's been growing beautiful. So I'll hell Bitcoin, right? <laughs> it's definitely going to be uh, growing more this year, next year, next year, next year, next year, right? And I guarantee you will have a market cap of one trillion eventually in the next minimum this year all the way to five ten years it will hit a trillion that's for sure a trillion uh market cap i guarantee that right and a trillion market cap is way larger than you think guys i believe bitcoin's price would be around fifty eight thousand, right if uh bitcoin's price would be around that time and it's estimated that about 1.2 trillion dollars is in uh the you know us is with us in the US, right? That is the estimation. So you can imagine how much money one trillion really is when it comes to Bitcoin as a market cap. So if you guys didn't know, follow me on Steemit. I upload videos earlier on Steemit and I put memes and I put uh, exclusive videos on Steemit and all that stuff. So make sure you guys follow me on Steemit if you have a Steemit. Uh, and also, if you guys wanna join the Genix team where we talk about cryptocurrency all day, and we uh, pretty much share information with each other and all that stuff. Go to genixtocrypto.com. Go to Genix Team. And right over here, follow these simple four steps. And you'll be able to join my chat, audio, and video private Discord server, guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I do daily, daily cryptocurrency video, guys. So make sure you guys subscribe. I have passive income ways that I use myself in the description below. So make sure you guys check that out. And I'll be seeing you guys on my next video. Take care.